So here is, remember the page load that we were looking at? We saw the FCP, the LCP. I wanted to provide a little bit more color here. So what I'm gonna do is hop over to this project or this organization, and then uh, let's, let's head over to performance and let's go ahead and just show all our front end page loads. So we have FCP, First Contentful Paint. The name kind of uh, says what it is, but it's uh, when the first image or DOM element is in the viewport, right? And then followed by Largest Contentful Paint, where you know the big bulk, the big bulky element kind of shows up here. Then first input delay, when we can actually start interacting with it. And if there's any shifting happening, I know we're all trying to load a bunch of elements in the page, and, you know, things like infinite scroll and all of these other things will mess with the shifting ads, who knows. Uh, this is the layout shift score that, uh, that, that measures the stability of the page here. Uh, so a few reasons why this is important. One, in the front end land, it doesn't really help just understanding transaction durations, right? Uh, it doesn't understanding just how long it took for the browser to, you know, start loading this and finish loading this. You want to understand how the JavaScript, the CSS, and the HTML is all behaving with each other to present a you know usable interface and then get the customer to an end goal as soon as possible. If the page takes too long to load uh, because you know too many elements are shifting and uh, you know the largest contentful thing hasn't loaded up properly, but you know the ads and everything else has or something like that, that's a problem. Uh, we want to be in the place where you know we present uh, the, the the most useful information and the most pertinent stuff. Uh, up front and within a reasonable time frame. So what's happening is we're surfacing the web vital stuff as part of all these transactions and surfacing it in all of these views as well. But let's go ahead and dive into exactly why this would be useful and how we can implement this. So I want to go ahead and monitor my tool store page. So what I'm doing here is just flagging one of my most important transactions and one, and one of uh, my most important projects. Uh, and I am then going to go ahead and set an alert for all of this stuff. So what we want to do here is dive in to, let's say, largest contentful paint, and we see exactly where it is off, and we can go ahead and set an alert. Before I do that, I actually want to talk about some ideal measurements here. So Google is starting to take all of this into their page ranking as well. So uh, if we do have one of these that are really out of bound, we might not show up where we want to show up, uh, as well as we're not providing the experience we want to our customers. So an ideal LCP measurement is about 2.5 seconds. An ideal first input delay is less than 100 milliseconds. And an ideal measurement for cumulative layoff shift is less than 0.1. So you can see um, pretty much with in and bounds when it comes to these two, largely because my app isn't very complex. And here is the one where I'm very, very out of bounds and I'm not providing the experience that I want here, right? So let's go ahead and make sure that one, we know when things are out of bounds here. So here we have the ability to create an alert and we have the data right here. So it looks like it pops over to four point second, four seconds where it's very poor. So let's go ahead and kind of set something at a ceiling of four or five seconds. So here I'm gonna specify transactions. And now I have all of this data set here. What I want to do next is select the LCP on the y-axis. And let's go ahead and create that alert now. So let's say above the max of this nine seconds. Let's go to warning about seven seconds, and we'll resolve when it goes to four seconds. There we go. And we can add any actions, email, any member is necessary or slack. There we go. So end to end from you know having a Next.js app, deploying it, and then uh, getting it to production using Netlify, being able to test our builds without many clicks, or you know having to deal with the build system or any providers, and now being able to understand what's going on, and then being proactive about it so it doesn't happen again, and we know when we compromise the user experience. So. That's how we wanted to kind of tie this all together here. Um, that's the end from the century end. Anything else you want to you want to add on? Here? I think, from my perspective, Neil. 
Yep. Um, no, that's great. Um, you, you hit it all uh, on all the right points. Um, from, from Netlify perspective, again, the developer workflow ensures you're able to iterate on your site quickly so that you can improve and build uh, better versions of your website. Um, and what the unlimited environments offer you is that iteration of your actual, actual application so that you can catch these um, improvements early on in the development cycle. For example, being able to tunnel into your local host machine and share your share a live URL with your team of what you, you're, uh, you're seeing on your local machine is very powerful as you uh, collaborate and do uh, work on code together. Um, for instance, we have collaborative deploy previews, which allows you to leave comments uh, within a specific deploy preview uh, and, uh, and share feedback um, with your development team. So uh, the development workflow, I think, is also has been very important to teams working within Netlify uh, in ensuring they're able to build faster, better, more modern sites, uh, as well as the infrastructure. It's very important. Uh, those two go hand in hand. Um, so it's very hard to build m performance sites with uh, uh, infrastructure that is hard to keep up with, but it's also hard to build really performance sites if your infrastructure is the only thing that is uh, uh, finely tuned. So uh, Netlify and Sentry and the partner ecosystem allows you to build really uh, performance modern applications and uh, get the information you need to iterate on your website and application really quickly uh, to build those better user experiences.